Hi, I'm Joe Felstead for iConnect 007 panel session. And today we're going to be talking about flexible circuits uh, with a couple of gurus, longtime uh, partners in the uh, flex circuit industry. Uh, on my immediate left is Al Wazerzo with uh, Cirex and senior uh, uh, market development uh, uh, manager and uh, uh, Michael Jawitz, um, who is a second generation flex circuit engineer involved in the IPC. I have a lot of, uh, perhaps some of the viewers are, are familiar and met your father. I know a lot of people here today remember your father dearly. Thank you. So um, today we're going to be uh, talking about uh, discussing uh, flex circuits and uh, applications. Uh, there will be a, a, we'll touch on a lot of different things, but the major focus is kind of looking for opportunities. Uh, perhaps here in the U.S., those same kinds of opportunities that we have spillover uh, potential in other parts of the world. But um, with that as a premise, maybe we can start off. What kinds of things uh, do each of you see as uh, areas of opportunity? What kinds of products? Uh, what kind of interesting challenges do you see for flexible circuits? Well, uh, Joe, first of all, uh, let me say that I'm uh, honored to be here on the panel with uh, you and Michael. Uh, flex circuits, uh, you know, the, I think the three of us, if we added how many years we've been doing this, it would be embarrassing. Uh, and, and I think for, for a long time they seem to have uh, sprung onto uh, the electronics world and then for a long time there were no changes and then there were some major milestones and now recently I think we're seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of new things that are, that are interesting. I know you're involved in a lot of uh, uh, things that are out there, so to speak, and perhaps are predicting tomorrow's uh, technology, but some of the things that, that sort of intrigue me that I see happening out there, the printable electronics thing okay. uh, is very uh, is very intriguing and in that, you know, certainly we understand, you know, it's a, a fancy inkjet printer that can print on anything, but I'm wondering, you know, how long is it going to be before we start putting those things inside rigid flexes as inner layers, you know, just print your inner layers. Mm -hmm. Certainly a lot of things to overcome to do that. The other thing that I keep hearing a lot about uh, is the term wearable electronics, and mm -hmm. it seems that it goes hand in hand with flex circuits and, and you know, uh, everything from uh, medical applications to recreational applications yeah. and, of course, industrial applications, including first responders and, and things like this. And then, you know, aside from that, there's some, you know, some marketing trends that we could talk about, some, some overall specific trends that I've seen, uh, but I don't want to hog the show. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me pass it on over to Mike, uh, who represents a much larger uh, entity than I do. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, certainly, uh, I mean, I, now from, obviously you have a military aerospace kind of perspective on things, and you're a, a technical manager in research and development, so you get a chance to kind of see where the dirt is, where the problems are, is that correct? <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we kind of deal uh, in, in what's referred to as that 1% group, or the, off the standard stuff. We're looking at stuff that's gonna last a lot longer than most items. Uh, they're not retouchable, right. so we're not recoverable many times, so we're out there to make sure that what we design is gonna last for 15, 20 years mm -hmm. and never know what happens. But, you know, our biggest concern is, is longevity and the fact the lighter we can go, the better. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're looking at higher uh, passages, higher volume of networks going through these cables. Uh, we're reducing the weight, so we, we cut down on any redundancies. So yeah. we, you know, our quality is, is the utmost. And you know, we got thinner and lighter, and yet we want uh, better performance. Yeah. And you're doing this manufacturing yourselves. No, we, we actually stuff? work with most most of our manufacturing is done by subcontracts okay. uh, at the bare board level and above. Yeah. But we we do have a huge design group that's responsible for creating tomorrow's designs. And yeah. we work with the suppliers to say, we want to do this, and they say we've never done it before, so yeah. we go off that path. Yeah, I mean, we, we have a certain shared history of sorts that I, uh, I worked for Boeing 35 years ago, and, and uh, we, uh, at the time, the Boeing Aerospace up in Seattle, we were... Uh, developing some of the worst, first, uh, I won't say bad term, uh, first rigid flex circuits that, that Boeing was used in instrumentation clusters for the 767. So uh, I, I, I understand, yeah. you know, a lot of those issues and how Boeing had need for them. Uh, certainly aerospace has uh, some very unique pressures, I, and I trust it's still the same today. We were given budgets, uh, weight budgets that were down to grams. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> On the electronics. Yeah. You know, we, we, we go the gamut. We, we have areas of our company that we have to make something last. 
for 10 years and only get used once or twice. Yeah. And we have uh, obviously the airplanes that have to see many thousands of ups and downs, pressures, depressurizations. And then we have items like uh, the satellites that go up in space and you know, 20 years later, they're still working 30 years. We have some satellites that are 35, 40 years old that contain flex cables in them. And yeah. you know, so the technology has to be right the first time. We don't get the luxury of bringing them back all the time and say, let's change this and let's change that. Yeah. So on the other extreme, I mean, from the military back to the, the, the commercial, um, you know, you mentioned printed electronics, and certainly that's very interesting. And again, I go back, and Michael and I were talking in the first of it, you know, a company called Elf Technology, that's extended length flex that we did right. in 1991, and we were trying to build, you know, essentially on a printed fashion, right. raster printing circuits onto that. So, you know, these things, I guess we were a little bit ahead of our time. Um, but those certainly seem to be, you know, the right kinds of technologies, you know, they have to be you know, mated to the application. Right. Um, how are you looking at some of that in your own work, or uh, we're not at Cirix, We're not looking at printed electronics yet, uh, other than like I like I mentioned the the curiosity about whether inner layers, uh, okay. you know, could could be uh, could be used that way. But the uh, the wearable electronics were kind of we've had uh, some of our customers approach us on that, and uh, that's very interesting. Um, a, another trend. Uh, that I've noted, Mike uh, brought up a real good one with weight, okay. uh, and obviously that's very important if things are going in space, but weight, and then the other one that I like to couple with that is heat. Yeah. And you know, back in the old days, it didn't matter, you know, the cell phones were bricks, and yeah. it didn't matter what they weighed. Today, every, everything is small, lightweight, and of course, electronics, heat, yep. heat is bad. Heat oh, is bad in everything, and uh, uh, LED lights, yep. uh, that craze, uh, and so, uh, you know what heat means to electronics and moving the heat, getting it out, having it not deteriorate or, or affect the reliability. Those are two trends, technological trends, that are driving the flex circuit mm -hmm. and how, how it's made and how it performs, the materials that are used uh, uh, to, uh, to drive the heat out and, and, and produce a lightweight. Uh, uh, flex circuits, of course, are, are, are custom made for a lightweight environment and that yeah. they replace a lot heavier items. Uh, but the heat, the heat issue is, is a very interesting one. Yeah. I, I think back to some materials that you know were one of the suppliers they developed in, you know, I'm going back a few decades, and I'm, I'm trusting that it's still in use in some applications. Basically, a, a, like a ceramic loaded polyimide uh, for ceramic dealing, filled, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. yep. dealing with some of that that heat uh, dissipation. Oh, well. there's a lot of new materials. Uh, there's uh, there's some interesting composites, graphite composites okay. that uh, that are moving heat. Um, of course, the other thing uh, uh, that you got to keep in mind is that the, you know, there's new materials, as you know, developed every day. Yeah, they yeah. come out, everybody's got the, the, the new good idea, but if, if it doesn't play well in my sandbox, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm not Boeing, but uh, I can't, you know, if I have to build a whole new shop with new equipment just to be able to use this material, this technology, yeah, it's going to be a lot more difficult to bring it to market. But if the if the new idea, the new material, and there are some new materials, right. uh, can be a, readily adapted to my already existing conventional PWB processing, then we've got something there. There, yeah. there's some very interesting graphite composites mm -hmm. that have uh, uh, incredible CTEs yeah. along with some uh, superior thermal conductivity that yeah. uh, that are helping uh, the RF microwave, you know, millimeter wave yeah. based array these types of people, uh, and then the LED people. Right. The LED people have a very sensitive price point, uh, so they've got a heat issue, they've got, they've got a, a accelerated, more, more than normal heat issue, but then they also have this uh, cost point that uh, yeah. you know, they, need, they need a very cost-effective solution. Yeah. So you've heard aluminum boards, this sure, kind of sure. thing. So, so you know, swinging back, I mean, uh, you know, talking about those new materials, obviously somebody has to take point. Uh, you know, I know that there's a very uh, conservative approach to building products for have people hanging in the air, uh, but somewhere along the way progress is made. It, it must be. I know we did work, you know, in ourselves. Matt, how do you go through, or how do you, how do, would one, how, how do you manage or affect those kinds of changes, looking at new materials and new opportunities for the kinds of things that you need for your company? 
Well, we have a whole group, and depending on where it's from, whether it's from you know commercial or military or aerospace, but each group is responsible for looking at their product line themselves, and we mm -hmm. do an extensive testing in-house. Mm -hmm. uh, we work with the suppliers of material, we work with the board suppliers uh, to come up with the best product. There, mm -hmm. you know, no, there's no standard way of doing anything. Everything has to be done on an individual basis. So understanding, we work with a lot of material science people on the materials, we work with a lot of product design guys on the new designs, and mm -hmm. obviously, uh, you know, all the requirements for safety and everything else that go into it. So it's it's always a joint effort. We mm -hmm. don't, we don't uh, do anything singular. Okay. Uh, it's too big of a role. Yeah, that's that need of dialogue. I know, again, well, thinking back to your father, he was instrumental in teaching a lot of people in this industry about rigid flex. On a, on a regular basis, yeah. and, and a lot of his students still out there among our audience today, I'm sure. <laughs> One right now, and, and I as well. Yeah, so. I, I spent many a nights trying to prove his stuff wrong and not getting anywhere. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking at, again, you know, in, in my own work, you mentioned, you know, some of the activities, and I think you're probably aware of some of my madness, but, you know, that idea of other materials. We, you know, we, we, we've got to keep pushing the edge of the envelope. I, I, Probably both of you sat in, I'm trusting on the, the, the keynote, you know, with the Diamantes, and I thought, you know, that, that idea of, of uh, somehow being uh, the author of your own demise, you know, so yeah. that you can resurrect yourself in this phoenix, you know. I think uh, it's one thing that I, I look for in this industry. I've been at it for, you know, 40 some odd years, 42, 43 years now. Um, and, you know, I find one thing that's fascinating for me is that I think uh, had someone uh, teletransported me from then to today that I think I'm, I, I might actually be surprised that I would know how to do a lot of stuff. Now, I'd be very, very impressed with the advances in some of the manufacturing tools, but I would have an appreciation for what they're doing. And, you know, we're on this cusp of looking at these new things, new changes. I, I, I think I would add to your shopping list there um, uh, something that's growing interest in a or in uh, uh, Europe, yeah. and uh, through uh, the efforts of folks at the University of uh, Illinois uh, in stretchable circuits. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. So when you talked about wearable, I started thinking about the the kinds of uh, other materials that are out there, things that are not common today that could find you know a lot of uh, applicability in in things and. Yet those materials that they want to use, they're, they're even less forgiving when it comes to heat. Right. So, um, and which actually caused me to circle back. I mean, uh, how do we address those, uh, uh, you know, what kinds of things can we do or what other alternative methods are being explored or examined by either of your companies as we're kind of being pigeonholed, you know, to deal with uh, lead-free solders which have the higher uh, temperatures. Right. How, how are you uh, engaging with your customers to look at, or you know, how, what do they press you for in that regard? In, yeah, in removing heat and, yeah. and things like that, yeah, for wearable. Well, of course, we're, we're uh, tasked to look at the full breadth of what's available mm -hmm. in the way of materials and processes, and this is one of the big changes that I think I, clearly you, you've seen in, in your uh, career as well as Mike, that uh, the, uh, the printed circuit board job shop now has to have a wide breadth of uh, capability mm -hmm. to be able, it's no longer, you know, the McDonald's menu of, you know, FR4 and, and Capton. You've got right. to be able to get to, to not only uh, understand the materials, but have experience with the different materials. And that's what we're seeing from our customers, an ability to, to uh, uh, put together a circuit that addresses their, uh, their needs, their, their technological solution, uh, and, and hits their price points, and, yeah. and sometimes that's that's a very difficult task to do, especially where heat is uh, involved. We use a lot of copper, maybe crosshatch copper, mm -hmm. for uh, uh, heat copper, as you know, is an excellent heat uh, yes, conductor, uh, but it's also, when you're talking about a flex circuit, it's probably the most non-flexible of the items in that sandwich, so, <laughs> you know, you crosshatch it, you do what you can. Uh, aluminum is very, uh, uh, is very promising, it's very low cost, very lightweight, uh, but it's not very flexible. Uh, and then you've got uh, some of these uh, you know, thick films, some of these pastes and things mm -hmm. you can use uh, to try to move things around. But I think the, the macro idea is that one needs to spread their wings and be, and be very aware, and that's why an IPC function is, is a very good uh, venue for that, to become right. very aware of what's available 
and pick and choose your battles, what you, you know, what you want to be good at, and, yeah. and be able to offer that as a solution to the customer. Yeah. Yeah. Any you know, <laughs> well, you know we, we do have some groups that are set up looking very heavily into the uh, lead-free environment. Uh, yeah. We're kind of restricted a little bit on that end, uh, being yeah. a military end. But heat is, is a problem in, in any product, it, yeah. whether it's, it's something we have in our pocket or not. Yeah. So we're doing a, a big push going forward, looking at alternatives. Uh, nothing solid yet, but you know, someday hopefully we'll be able to do that. But you know, weight and, and heat are you know, two biggest disasters in anything we use. So we're yeah. trying to get rid of both of them together. Yeah, well, that's, a, that's an inverse relationship between thermal excursion and long-term reliability. Somehow you have to and, and you know, especially when you look at aerospace types of applications, is you know, where does the heat go back to? I mean, they all talk about it. Thermal engineers talk about it all goes back to air. Well, if you're in space, I'm sorry, there's no air. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so, so the game is a little bit different uh, in in that regard. Right. Um, have you had an opportunity? I'm hoping you've had an opportunity to wander around the show uh, show floor at all a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. I have. Um, uh, and another interesting thing is the, and, and you were talking about it earlier, Joe, and I think you had another panel discussion about uh, what's become known as reshoring and yeah. the trend there. And uh, um, in, uh, I, I was kind of, uh, I guess, surprised to see the trend that started maybe 10 years ago with, with um, defense boards going overseas, yes, yeah. okay, you know, obviously the commercial boards started going a long time ago, but even defense product going overseas um, that seems to be that seems to be reversing now. I'm not real sure. I think uh, I think some of the IP is an issue. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but there's economic factors obviously at play as well. And uh, uh, I you know I think that's a good thing. What you know what do you think? Yeah, I I, I agree. Uh, I've seen a lot of changes. I, it is the show is is very well uh, represented from all assets, from equipment to suppliers mm -hmm. to uh, materials and. Uh, there's a lot of new stuff coming up that I've had a chance to talk with them and work on new materials and stuff that I'm going to bring back to the table and uh, hopefully start looking forward on that. I think yeah. this uh, this show really brought a lot more out in, in uh, a few of the years. I think it's a big change recently in the market. So, well, I say the change is the only guaranteed, only certainty <laughs> in life, right? It's yeah. Change. So we're um, we're on a, living in interesting times. I think I know, in, if, from what I understand from some of my friends in China, that. Uh, May you live in interesting times is a curse. But, <laughs> but uh, on, on the other hand, I think that it uh, it makes for some challenge. And as long as we're up to that, you know, without challenges, you know, we don't have uh, we won't make progress. And um, you know, pursuing that. I mean, in that quick regard, I'm just uh, you know thinking back to what you're doing as a, as a commercial company. How do you how do you pace yourself for those? Kinds of you know research and development. Are you driven by a customer, or do you have the well, to do anything? Well, yeah, the and and I think I think the printed circuit board industry, uh, being being an industry that's made up of for the most part small businesses. Right. Uh, we have a handful of large public companies. That most of the rest are small businesses. Tend to do their research and development on the fly. Yeah. Uh, a customer will come in and say, "Can you do this?" Well, I don't know. Let's try it. Type thing. Uh, there are some things, though, that uh, that Cyrix does on their on their own nickel without being asked, because you can, you know you could see, mm -hmm. if we were able to do this, why you know it would apply to this and this, and uh, we we currently have a, a project like that ongoing for uh, uh, the fabrication of uh, uh, multi-layered RF microwave boards. Mm -hmm. That uh, should it be promising, and it appears that it is, uh, would be very very helpful. And, it should be very adaptable. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, the customers, uh, uh, they have a, a requirement, they have something they're trying to uh, achieve, and uh, we take our knowledge base and try to apply yeah. that. Yeah. You know, we have, we have advanced design groups in advanced areas that we're always looking at tomorrow's technology. Yeah. Uh, you know, the most important thing in, in our and in most industries is understanding what we did yesterday and how we did it so we can go forward tomorrow. Uh, both not make the same mistakes twice, and then see where we can improve and go forward. And that's that's been the big battle with everything lately. So, uh, somebody said I forget which stage it was. It says anything anything worth doing is worth doing badly at first. Yes, <laughs> and I think kind of that's what R and D is about. It is. It is. So anyway, well look at I um, I think that we've uh, there's a lot of promise and there's I'm and we can keep on talking for a long time here, but uh, uh, I you know trust that you guys are available. You know to discuss, I don't want you sure. involved Absolutely. in a lot of these activities and 
you know, some of our uh, audience might be interested in chatting with you along the way. I'd I, be in contact definitely. with you because Absolutely. you're involved in some of the items. I, I think the future is very bright for Flex Circus, both globally and, and in North America. Yeah, great. Sorry. I agree, and, and we're available. And you know what? Uh, the pushing forward the IPC standards and, and getting out there with the new stuff, and, and yeah. that's really where our drive is, is, is push the numbers. Okay, good. Quick, one quick last question. You have, a, you have a son who's going to be involved in flexible service? Uh, my, my son, actually, uh, I took him to a bring your kid to work one day, and he said, if you've got to do this, I don't want to be bothered. He's actually a school teacher. He teaches oh. special ed for uh, moderate to severe. That's an important job. So he's, he's got a good job, and he, he's a good kid. That's great. Well, thank you, gentlemen, both. Al Wazerzag and Michael Jowitz. Thank you. For uh, panel session with iConnect007, I'm Joe Feltz. Thanks for watching.